All right, let's talk about Retrace 97, I Am, which, by the way, is an awesome chapter title. I'm later than usual with this chapter, uh, this chapter discussion. The new Retraces Raws should be out in a few days at this point. Uh, it's a mix between having been busier now that school's started up again, and me wanting to really let the events of this chapter sink in. Because a lot happened this chapter. This was a really big chapter. I saw the page amount and I'm like, yes, finally another big chapter. I was waiting for it. So, first up, the Doldy Doldum system situation thing is finally explained, fully explained this time. And there's no more clarification really left needed for that. Um, the stuff, even like really early on in the manga, when. Uh, when uh, Doldum per possessed uh, Gilbert at the uh, at Oz's uh, festival celebration thing, uh, the way that uh, Doldum was acting so you know malicious, they had that she had that vibe about her because it was a different, completely different Echo, completely different Doldum, and they the, uh, there have been so many different Echoes and Doldums just tossed aside over time, so that makes more that. Like completely addresses uh, the uh, that theory there, which was now confirmed to be true. The uh, flashback panel of Oz and Echo at the festival. Speaking of Echo, the following and like that fl little flashback panel plus the following panel of Echo in tears was probably the most emotional part of the chapter for me in a chapter that was already filled to the brim with emotional content. So that says a lot. Like, that one page had me pausing for, like, 30 seconds or so before I could go on. Uh, another important thing, right before the chapter title rolled in, which happened at, like, what, 20 pages in? It was a long time to build up to the chapter title, which it worked because there was this was such a big chapter. Uh... Glenn, as he was about to kill Alice, saw Lacey instead of Alice, and he couldn't go through with it. This is really important because it shows that he might be in over his head trying to do what he is. Like, once he gets to, if he ever even could get to Lacey, to the real Lacey, if he can't even strike just an image of her, how can he bring himself to actually kill or hurt the real thing? And he was doubting himself later on, uh, as the later in the chapter after he ran off, after he had Jabberwock set fire to everything. So there's that going on in his head now. He knows he would have great difficulty with it, and his resolve is kind of shaken. And I, so we'll see where that leads from there. But he's uh, he definitely has doubts now. Uh, Cheshire ran off with Alice, and they had a fun, brief interaction. It definitely showed a different side to Cheshire that we don't normally see or haven't normally seen since he hasn't been present for too long in the manga. But uh, he's kind of a brat like her, honestly, and it's uh, really, really funny and cute uh, just to see them, you know, bounce off each other like that. And this also finally signals how Alice will, be will become relevant in this final conflict, uh, which been waiting to see how she would, you know, fit into all this with all these other characters going on, and she's been kind of, uh, kind of pushed to the side for a little while, but it looks like she's finally going to be of importance again, with her asking, you know, what the uh, other Alice from the Abyss is up to, and her getting away from the main group, she's going to feed into this somehow, not sure yet how, I have no idea how, but, um, uh, the Alice from the Abyss is obviously interfering with everything, and she obviously has a plan. Maybe we'll get a little clarification on uh, on what happened with her, like uh, in between the end of the Headhunter arc and when she started explaining everything to Alice, because like how she got her memories back and everything, or if they just naturally formed over time again. Maybe we'll get a little insight into that before this ends, because she's becoming relevant again. I don't know. Uh. Now on to Vincent and his situation. I wasn't sure how Vincent could be saved from the suffering he was going through, because he was in such a deep pit of despair. 
I thought Gill said everything he could everything he could have on the subject beforehand, but Vincent twisted his interpretation of it into something really negative. Then Ada, Ada, and I'm still not sure how to pronounce her name, said the one thing Gill didn't, and it's perfect. It doesn't dismiss Vincent's existence like Vincent thought Gill's input did. It still allows him a way, a way out of sorts, a way to let go, but it still acknowledges the horrible things he's done. He just now has a starting point on how to live with it. It's just that one simple one one person, one person who wants to forgive him, who can forgive him and like accept him as he is in this state, without like negating what he's done in the past. Perfect. Like that's the one thing Gil didn't say, and it. Worked wonders, evidently, as he as Vincent broke down in tears, and Ada's. I'm just gonna call her Ada. Ada's shrugging off of his intent from the past, that like, shrugging off everything he's done in the past raises a question that's been raised before on the series: which matters more, someone's validity or the impact they have on others? The most notable example of this is Oz. He's by normal means not a real person. But his impact on others and the bonds he has with them makes him, quote-unquote, real. Now, while most of Vincent's interaction with Ada has been him utilizing his facade, the impact he had on her was real. He made her happy. He interested her. He left a impact on her life, a very positive impact. And, like, in some way, and just spending time with her and everything, she had, she really enjoyed it. And it meant something to her, even if she knew he wasn't being completely open and honest with her. Which I am still so glad they added in there that she was she wasn't being she wasn't being she wasn't being blind or anything. She knew something else was going on, and that added that little extra depth to her character that she really needed before the story ended. And it really helps now in this time, showing uh, just how strong she is. And now she wants to have an impact on him to let him actually live. I mean, he may have aged, but deep down he's still the same scared little boy he was in Sablier. Which I'm still not sure how to pronounce Sablier. I'm just going to shut up about pronunciation. Uh, he's, still, he's still the same scared little kid, because he never genuinely allowed himself to grow as a person. He was instead focusing on wiping his existence clean, too busy doing that than to focus on his current existence as it is. So that that's pretty much what I have to say about that. But in the end, while Vincent and Nada's interaction ended up being the focal point of the chapter, it was the material with Echo that left the biggest impression on me, especially with the last few pages between her and Oz. I, I could go into huge detail between about the... Uh, Doldy situation, Doldy trying to take over noise and everything, but it's it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I, I'm not sure how to elaborate on it. It's uh, Echo just culminated there. Um, I was glad that they added in that clarification on why it didn't need clarification exactly, but how Echo now almost feels like noise was in the past, like how their roles kind of reverse and everything. And that's because Noise, like, Echo was picking up the shredded pieces of the Noise from the past and kind of forming it. That's why she's Echo in that way, thematically. And it wasn't needed, but it was a really nice touch. And it made for some great scenes in, like, in inside uh, Noise and Echo's mind that watery place that everyone seems to have in their head. But, yeah, um, especially those last few pages between her and Oz. I really don't want to see Echo go. Though that doesn't seem to be preventable at this point. But I'll try to avoid thinking about that until I have no other choice. Meaning, probably, I won't be thinking about it until it's forcefully brought up again in the next chapter. Which, again, the Raw should be out in a few days, but I'm going to be waiting on the translation, meaning I'll be waiting a lot longer. I'm going to have to avoid any Pandora Hearts talk for a while. It's going to be hard. But yeah, amazing chapter. 
really looking forward to what happens from here, as always. Uh, series should be ending in the next two to three chapters. It might actually get to Retrace 100 after all, which I know we were concerned, fandom was concerned about, but that seems like it's a legitimate possibility at this point. But yeah, uh, until next chapter, see ya.